Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the previous classes, we have looked at uh, important uh, properties of the uh, gas dynamic flow, which is the uh, stagnation properties and the star properties. So, uh, to get the concepts clear, uh, we will do uh, three numericals uh, now and uh, look at various uh, aspects related to uh, stagnation and uh, star properties. So, uh, to uh, just to uh, recap, uh, the stagnation conditions uh, are can be defined at any point in the flow, and uh, they are achieved by a uh, isentropic process uh, going from that particular uh, velocity, pressure, and temperature conditions to a condition. Uh, where um, velocity goes to 0 and this is achieved isentropically and uh, using the energy equations and the isentropic relations one can relate uh, what happens to temperature and pressure at stagnation conditions those conditions are referred to as stagnation temperature and pressure uh, then um, the counterpart of that is the uh, star or the sonic uh, conditions um, in this uh, the flow is taken to a state um, where the velocity of the flow is equal to the um, acoustic speed at that uh, particular point. So, um, that is uh, at that uh, point. So, um, uh, that uh, Mach number is equal to 1. So, whatever be the uh, Mach number of the flow at that particular point through an isentropic process you take it to a uh, Mach number which is equal to 1 and then the properties uh, that you calculate at that uh, point is known as the sonic conditions uh, and in an uh, adiabatic flow both the uh, stagnation and the uh, star properties remain constant and uh, that is something that is going to be uh, widely used while solving um, problems. So, that is the basic uh, uh, concept. So, now, uh, let us look at the uh, numericals. The uh, first uh, example here is uh, an aircraft uh, flies at 800 km per hour at an altitude of 10 kilometers. The air is isentropically compressed in a diffuser. Mm. If the uh, Mach number at the exit of the diffuser is 0 0.36, uh, determine uh, the entry uh, Mach number B velocity temperature and pressure of the air at the exit of the diffuser. So, uh, see there is a example where an engineering device uh, known as the diffuser. So, a diffuser is um, any device which uh, uh, reduces velocity and uh, consequences of that is that uh, uh, pressure and temperature increase mm, uh, and uh, this we have seen even in our uh, discussions in the isentropic uh, relations that uh, when uh, it is decelerated pressure and temperature will increase. So, uh, uh, so these are present in many many devices um, and this is a typical example. Uh, so, here uh, the way to begin with is um, you are given uh, the altitude. So, uh, again some concepts that become important here is the um, uh, flight uh, velocity and uh, altitude is given. So, uh, static conditions and stagnation conditions the distinction between them. So, once you know the altitude uh, you can reference to a standard atmosphere and get um, the pressure at those altitudes. So, uh, uh, the pressure is P infinity uh, this is 0 0.264 bar and uh, temperature which is uh, T infinity 
is uh, 223.15 Kelvin. So, uh, this we can uh, easily find out um, by uh, using a, a reference uh, uh, atmosphere. Uh, then, um, uh, we are given uh, the velocity of the aircraft. So, aircraft velocity is given uh, that is uh, V infinity. This is given in 800 uh, kilometer per hour. So, this can be uh, converted to meter per second the SI units which is normally used and uh, the uh, conversion is uh, this turns out to be uh, 222 to meter per uh, second. So, uh, one should notice here that uh, the uh, temperature is quite low and uh, you can expect uh, the velocities uh, the velocity is significant. So, you can expect compressible effects here. So, first thing to do here uh, as we know in our uh, relations um, of uh, stagnation conditions and static conditions uh, that uh, everything is dependent on uh, gamma and Mach number this is air. So, gamma is 1.4. So, um, the way to do this is to connect uh, the given quantities uh, to the stagnation quantities uh, and then from there uh, come to the exit of the diffuser. Since the flow is isentropic, uh, the stagnation pressures and stagnation temperature do not change within the flow. So, uh, once uh, this is sort of uh, understood, uh, then uh, it is easy to go ahead with the uh, solution of this problem. So, first point is we have to get the uh, Mach number uh, for this uh, flow. So, uh, for uh, Mach number is um, V by uh, V infinity by A infinity that is uh, the Mach number of the uh, flight. This is G 1 to 2.2 uh, divided by square root of gamma r t which is 1.4287 and temperature is the static temperature at that condition. So, um, it is 223.15 and uh, this Mach number if you do the calculation it will come out to be 0 0.742 uh, uh, is the Mach number of this uh, uh, flight. So, uh, this is known now uh, we have to get uh, the relation between uh, what is P naught 1. So, P naught 1 and T naught 1. The idea is at the exit of the diffuser. So, uh, diffuser is uh, for this this is a subsonic flow. So, uh, you have a diffuser something of this kind which so, this is the entry uh, where it is coming in and conditions are known here Mach number is 0 0.742 P 1 T 1 is known and P 2 T 2 uh, and uh, uh, should be found when M 2 is known to be 0 0.36. So, uh, this is uh, known to you. So, uh, and the flow is isentropic. So, P 0 1 and T 0 1 remains uh, constant. So, we have to find what is P 0 1 and T 0 1. Uh, the way to do this as I had discussed last time is that once you know the Mach number and gamma, uh, you can uh, calculate this from the relations uh, P 0 by P is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square whole power gamma by gamma minus 1. Uh, you can use these uh, relations uh, calculate this uh, over computer or um, using a calculator this is quite simple. So, it is um, you can do it over a calculator or uh, you have tables and charts uh, for uh, this um, which can be used. Uh, or uh, you can use also an online calculator where you can feed in the gamma and Mach number and you can get uh, results for what is uh, usually the results will be in terms of P by P naught and 
t by t naught for a given uh, gamma and Mach number. So, uh, this can be easily uh, found out by various means you are free to choose the means um, and uh, what you can do then is get a p by p naught for this given Mach number in this case uh, for a 0 0.742 p by p naught uh, turns out to be 0 0.695. So, um, that means uh, p is known and so p naught will be uh, p divided by uh, this value 0 0.695 and p is already given uh, at 0 0.264. So, this is 0 0.264 divided by 0 0.6 uh, 9.5 which is uh, 0 0.38 bar. Now, for uh, static uh, stagnation temperature also you can uh, go ahead with uh, uh, similar uh, formulation you can find out T naught by T. Uh, the other way once you know directly you know the velocity the other uh, way to get T naught is using the equation T plus v square by 2 c p for a uh, calorically perfect gas you can use this equation also and here all the quantities are uh, known to you. So, this is 223.15 uh, plus 222.22 square divided by 2 c p and uh, t naught uh, turns out to be uh, 247 point uh, 0.72 Kelvin. So, uh, now you know P naught and T naught uh, now getting to the exit is uh, straightforward these quantities remain the same P naught and T naught. So, now Mach number has changed to uh, M 2 is um, 0 0.36. Now, again for this value of M 2 uh, one has to find out what is P naught P by P naught and uh, t by t naught. If we uh, find this then uh, uh, it is uh, you can multiply the um, equation. So, uh, for 0 0.36 m 2 equal to 0 0.36. So, p by p naught is um, 0 0.914 and uh, so, uh, you can get P 2 is uh, P naught is 0 0.38 multiplied by 0 0.914 equal to uh, 0 0.347 bar. Similarly, T by T naught, uh, T by T naught is 0 0.975. So, uh, T 2 you can get it. Uh, uh, multiply it by uh, 247.72 this will be uh, 241.53 Kelvin. Now, what uh, we need to do is um, uh, now find the uh, velocity that is v2 we are given mach number m2 so uh, we can get velocity v2 is m2 uh, multiplied by a2 mm, the speed of sound at that particular point speed of sound is a local uh, variable so uh, you have to calculate the speed of sound at 2 uh, this is different uh, from what it was at 1 and uh, a2 is square root of gamma r T 2 and T 2 you have found out here in the previous step and so you can substitute uh, that here 287 and 2 uh, 241.53 uh, and multiply this by Mach number. So, this turns out to be 311.52. And uh, V2 uh, is just uh, multiply 0 0.36 to this value 
and you get V2 as 112.146 meter per second. So, uh, this uh, example sort of um, showed you uh, how the concepts of uh, stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature can be used to uh, quickly estimate uh, flow properties at different points um, in the flow path. Um, in this case, it was a diffuser uh, and it had an isentropic uh, uh, flow through the diffuser. So, uh, for the first estimate, this is a very good um, way to uh, calculate these uh, flow properties. Now, let us go to the uh, second example. Mm, in the second uh, numerical example, air at uh, 400 Kelvin temperature exits a duct as a jet at sonic velocity. So, uh, here it is given uh, that um, the temperature of air flow is 400 Kelvin and it is at sonic conditions. That means, uh, we know what is sonic condition uh, at the exit of the duct uh, Mach number equal to uh, 1. So, Mach number at exit is equal to 1, gamma is given, R is given um, 1.4 and 287. Uh, now, determine velocity of sound at 400 Kelvin, velocity of sound at stagnation conditions, maximum velocity of jet possible uh, stagnation enthalpy. So, um, here um, uh, now the velocity of sound at uh, 400 Kelvin is the same as the velocity of jet because uh, you are having it at critical conditions that is V star is equal to A star. So, this is at sonic uh, speed. So, velocity at of sound here at the exit is the same as square root of uh, gamma R uh, T E which is uh, 1.4 multiplied by multiplied by Mm, the temperature 400 Kelvin and uh, you can find out this turns out to be 400.89 meter per second. Now, uh, next is um, what is the speed of sound at uh, stagnation conditions. Uh, now, uh, this is also uh, since T naught is an important parameter that is the stagnation uh, temperature, you can calculate the velocity of sound at uh, stagnation uh, conditions at stagnation temperature that is the uh, stagnation uh, velocity of sound or uh, you can that is given by you can use uh, uh, from here you can go in a very different uh, uh, methods you are possible all are equivalent uh, one is to use um, uh, the charts uh, to uh, you know the speed uh, for this its Mach number is 1 and the relationship between uh, the uh, p by p naught t by t naught at Mach number equal to uh, 1 is known and then uh, you can find out uh, what is T naught and from there get A naught. Um, but another sort of uh, uh, straightforward method is directly using the alternate form of the energy equation which is uh, A square by uh, gamma minus 1 uh, plus V square by um, 2 uh, is equal to a naught square by gamma minus 1. Uh, this uh, is directly from the alternate form of energy equation uh, and uh, here uh, for stagnation conditions uh, the velocity is 0. So, this is the equation uh, energy equation. So, here uh, both the v square and a square is known uh, because they are the same. So, uh, this is turns out to be 2 gamma minus 1 uh, a star square is equal to a 0 square by gamma minus 1 or uh, from this uh, you can uh, write immediately that a 0 square is gamma plus 1 by 2 a star square. 
so um, uh, this gives you directly the uh, relation for a naught uh, because a star is known you have already found it out so a naught uh, turns out to be 439.15 meter per second then the next question is what is the maximum velocity of the jet uh, possible now here also uh, we can use uh, uh, the energy equation to uh, get to this uh, number uh, the idea here is that um, if you look at the energy equation for an adiabatic flow v2 square by 2 you can see that any change in velocity involves uh, uh, interaction between uh, the enthalpy and energy mm, uh, kinetic energy so it's a balance between uh, the uh, enthalpy and kinetic energy uh, so uh, what uh, if you ask the question what is the maximum velocity uh, that is possible uh, then uh, uh, there are two uh, that the answer is simply that all the if all the uh, enthalpy and eternal energy gets converted only to kinetic energy uh, then uh, that yields the maximum velocity that can be extracted from the mm, flow uh, that is v max uh, so uh, that is the concept here uh, the it is directly uh, it's the uh, in the other uh, way if you look at it um, uh, if you take the flow to zero velocity then all kinetic energy is getting converted to uh, flow enthalpy uh, so that is the stagnation enthalpy so uh, we can relate that so this is uh, stagnation enthalpy h naught uh, and uh, this is equal to uh, in the second case uh, this goes to 0 so this goes to v max square uh, by 2 this is the maximum enthalpy that can be uh, taken in so and uh, since uh, this uh, h naught can be expressed as cpt naught and uh, we know this can be expressed as a naught square by gamma minus 1 v max square by 2 then uh, already this a naught is determined in the previous uh, uh, calculation so v max v max is uh, a naught square root of 2 by gamma minus 1 multiplied by a naught and this turns out to be 981.97 uh, meter per second so uh, this is uh, the concept of uh, uh, maximum velocity and uh, finally we have to determine the stagnation enthalpy this is uh, h naught mm. h naught is a stagnation enthalpy uh, it is uh, cp t plus uh, v square by 2 okay uh, so uh, here uh, the t uh, temperature is t star velocity is a star this is already known and uh, it is calculated so this comes out to be 1005 multiplied by 400 Kelvin uh, v star is known is also is 400.89 by uh, 2 and uh, this results in uh, 482.35 kilojoules per kg so we have uh, determined uh, the various so here uh, a new uh, concept that came about in this uh, numerical is that of maximum uh, velocity uh, through an isentropic process and this is determined when all the uh, enthalpy total enthalpy gets converted only to um, kinetic energy so another uh, example similarly uh, using 
uh, for a particular device is uh, 3, a ramjet flies at 11 kilometer uh, altitude with a flight Mach number of 0 0.9, combustion takes place at constant pressure and the temperature uh, sees an increase of uh, 1500 uh, degrees centigrade. So, temperature increases by uh, 1500 degrees centigrade. Uh, but uh, during combustion pressure remains constant combustion products are then ejected through the nozzle at inlet pressure and temperature uh, are 0 0.3 atmospheres and 213 kelvin so inlet uh, pressure and temperature is given uh, exit pressure is 0 0.3 atmospheres uh, that is also given so let's take it as a box and what is given at the inlet uh, pressure is given 0 0.3 atmospheres and uh, temperature is given 213 Kelvin and at the uh, outlet that is this is 1, 2 at the outlet you are given um, exit pressure is 0 0.3 atmospheres this is given uh, and here you are given pressure is constant. Uh, while temperature increases by 1500 degree centigrade it is the same as uh, uh, Kelvin so 1500 Kelvin calculate stagnation pressure and temperature you calculate the exit velocity uh, what will be the critical values of pressure and uh, temperature mm. so uh, here assumption is that a uh, pressure and temperature brought to stagnation conditions inside the combustion chamber isentropically from the diffuser. Uh, so, the diffuser again it is an isentropic diffuser and uh, it is taking um, so flight Mach number is given 0 0.9 and is taking that and uh, converting it isentropically to the uh, combustion chamber uh, conditions and their pressure is constant. So, let us uh, solve this uh, you are given uh, P 1 that is inlet pressure is 0.3 atmosphere is given and T 1 is also given uh, 213 Kelvin if that was correct yes 213 Kelvin uh, so and Mach number is given um, Mach number of the flight is 0 0.9 uh, so um, now uh, directly use uh, the relations p by p naught for uh, Mach number of uh, 0 0.9 Mach number is 0 0.9 if you get this uh, this value is 0 0.5913 so from this uh, p naught is calculated it is um, 0 0.507 atmospheres uh, next is um, what about uh, uh, temperature T by T naught. So, here uh, T by T naught at 0 0.9 is given 0 0.8606. So, T naught goes to uh, 247.5 Kelvin. So, uh, what is given? Uh, the given uh, it is given uh, that uh, uh, the uh, increase in uh, temperature is uh, 1500 uh, Kelvin. Uh, now, a diffuser decreases the velocities uh, uh, to very low values. So, um, one can uh, unless otherwise stated since there is uh, it is not uh, really stated what is uh, uh, assumed here is that um, uh, the uh, diffuser brings down the velocities to low values inside the combustor, uh, combustion chamber. So, if it is low values then uh, uh, its uh, pressure and temperature uh, is almost uh, same as that of the stagnation pressure and temperature this is something uh, we refer to as the uh, reservoir uh, conditions when velocity is very very uh, low then 
uh, its uh, uh, pressures and temperatures are, are very close to that of the stagnation pressure and temperature. So, we can use that assumption here and uh, uh, find out that uh, what is uh, the final temperature. So, uh, T final that is T exit uh, or T naught exit because it is the total temperature. So, you are adding uh, 247.5 plus 1500, uh, this is 1747.5 Kelvin and uh, uh, now, the final uh, temperature is known and uh, pressure remains constant here. So, that is given it remains constant at 0 0.507 uh, atmospheres. Mm. Now, uh, at the exit the pressure is given as 0 0.3 mm, atmosphere. So, this is very special case of very ideal uh, kind of analysis. Mm, uh, so, in real analysis there will be other uh, irreversibilities that come into picture. So, um, so here uh, then we can use uh, we know the pressure ratio here that is P by P naught is known. Okay. So, um, this turns out to be 0 0.5917 and uh, so consequence is similar to what we started with this so m exit is 0 0.9 yet what is the velocity at exit so now you see that the temperature has increased as a consequence of this um, the speed of sound has increased the uh, t by uh, t exit that is t by t naught 4.9 we already know this uh, we had uh, done it already and from there you can uh, calculate what is uh, T exit. So, you can calculate T exit which turns out to be 1506.345 Kelvin and uh, from here you can calculate the V exit by uh, using uh, uh, either you can use uh, uh, the conditions that uh, uh, you relate uh, t t naught that is h naught is equal to h plus v square by 2 cp you can use this or the other way to do it is uh, find out the mac, uh, the uh, egg, uh, ma uh, the speed of sound for this particular uh, temperature static temperature and then find out velocity so, then V exit will become 696.21 meter per second. Now, for uh, to find out critical conditions, uh, what are the critical conditions? Uh, so, uh, this you can directly use uh, the relation between uh, P star and uh, P naught is gamma by gamma minus 1 similarly T star by T naught is 2 by gamma plus 1. So, you can uh, and you T naught and P naught is known. So, this turns out uh, to be 0 0.2678 bar and here this turns out to be 1456.25 Kelvin. So, I think uh, with these three uh, numerical examples, uh, we can uh, sort of uh, look at, uh, we have a clarity on the uh, understanding of uh, stagnation pressure and uh, stagnation properties and star properties. So, um, uh, with this understanding, we will move on to uh, normal shocks where uh, these concepts will be used uh, extensively to uh, analyze the normal shock itself. So, uh, that we will start from the next class.